Hello everyone, Max here with Fiction Rant to bring you my thoughts on how to at least start fixing Rey from the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I'm sure I'm not being entirely original on this, but I still want to talk about it, so here we go. Let me start by saying I love Star Wars. I always have, and I hope I always will. It's never been particularly deep, but it's always struck a good balance between good storytelling, excellent world building, and a lot of on-screen spectacle. Then the prequel trilogy came out, and with it came the first round of fans being outraged and disappointed in what they got, but, you know, over the years, the fans have generally accepted the prequels, and many even rate Revenge of the Sith in particular as one of the best in the series. Then the sequel trilogy came out, and fans across the world united in the verdict that everyone loves the originals. Plenty of people like the prequels, plenty of people hate the prequels, but basically nobody likes the sequels. At least, they're inferior films to what came before. Which is sad, because they really did show so much potential. Finn, the former stormtrooper who might be a budding Jedi. No, he's just some dude and he, he'll get sidelined for the rest of the series. Han, Luke, and Leia will be in the movies and never appear on screen together. For reasons. Luke is back with his new school of Jedi apprentices. Oh, wait, no, he got all depressed because he had a bad dream one time and decided to give up on this insanely dangerous nephew that he has and just leave him to threaten the galaxy and so on and so on. Yeah, the sequels have issues. What I'm going to talk about in this video, though, is the missed opportunity to make Rey not only more interesting, but also better integrated into the existing story. So, first off, let's hop into the Wayback Machine and talk about how Anakin Skywalker was conceived in the prequel trilogy, or rather, before they began. Basically, canonically, Darth Plagueis and Darth Sidious, that is, Palpatine, we're doing some major mojo in the dark side, prompting the conception of Anakin in Shmi Skywalker's womb by midichlorians. In effect, he was created directly by the Force, impregnating Shmi. It was kind of a reaction to them working their major mojo. This leaves some question, mainly, uh, why did they leave Anakin to grow up on Tatooine without kidnapping him to making him into an apprentice while he was still just a child, instead of, you know, letting the Jedi get a hold of him, potentially messing up the whole thing? My guess on this is that while they were doing their major mojo, they didn't actually know what they'd done until Darth Sidious, that is Senator Palpatine, met the kid on Coruscant. This was undeniably either really sloppy or just entirely unintentional. Anakin, later Vader, ended up being a huge disappointment to Palpatine, even though he did get him converted over to the dark side. True, he was crazy strong in the Force, but that potential was massively hampered by him getting sliced and diced by Obi-Wan on Mustafar. So, ever since then, Palpatine put a bunch of time and effort into basically just trying to find a suitable replacement apprentice to one day take over the mantle of Sith Master, with the most notable subject of his attention being Luke, Vader's son. So here's my theory, which, again, I'm sure I've heard at least a variation on this somewhere, but for the life of me, I do don't know where. So, what if Rey was attempt number two? What if, seeing the proof of concept that was Anakin, Palpatine decided to try again, working some more major mojo in the Force, except he was significantly more intentional this time, deciding instead of accidentally impregnating some random nobody on Tatooine, that he'd instead use one of his citizens, or perhaps even a dark side acolyte to do the job, instead and then set them up on Jetta to keep them out of the eye of other Imperials who might want to impede his plans in some way, plus, you know, Vader, keep him from euthanizing the child because he'd be a threat to his position. The mother of Rey would then carry her baby to term, begin raising her, and everything like that, with the expectation that one day Palpatine would show up and take the kid to be his new apprentice. There's just one problem. Palpatine was then killed by Darth Vader and the destruction of the Death Star, so he never came to collect the new toddler Rey. Suddenly, the whole mission is a bust, and the mother, who suddenly has no master, just leaves, abandoning Rey to a difficult life on Jeddah, which is what we get to see in Force Awakens. This would fix a few things. For one, it would explain why Rey is so naturally gifted in the Force, and it would make Palpatine being her grandfather feel a lot less contrived and silly and kind of you know, gross. For another, it would establish a really interesting dynamic between Kylo Ren and Rey, and that he aspires to be just like Darth Vader, his grandfather. But meanwhile, Rey is basically the same thing as Vader, conceived by the Force. So she would be as close to being just like Vader as it's physically possible to be, conceived in exactly the same way. So naturally, Kylo Ren would be fascinated with her because he would recognize, oh, 
here's somebody who has that same potential as my grandfather. Maybe I should take her as an apprentice, you know, something like that. Give him more of a reason than just, oh, some girl beat me in a lightsaber duel one time. I'm going to go ahead and follow her around now. It would also go a long way toward explaining how she's so naturally talented in dark side techniques in particular, most notably Force Lightning, which, incidentally, up until Rise of Skywalker was a power reserved to only the most powerful Sith, and that was only after years of training and is basically manifested hatred that fries your enemies. Or in Rey's case, it's an accident. This would help with making that make a little more sense, because... Since it's something that Palpatine is doing intentionally, he could also build in things like, oh yeah, she's going to just have this inherent knowledge of certain techniques that I want her to have, which will also, because they're dark side techniques, the dark side is kind of self-reinforcing. You start using these techniques and it pushes you farther and farther into the dark side. So having her built in with this instinctive grasp of these techniques would ultimately do a lot of favors in terms of making sure that she behaved the way that he wanted her to. Just like many other content creators out there, I could go into how big of a Mary Sue Ray is, but you know, I'll spare you. The fact is, Disney wanted a new character who's super powerful, but they didn't have a ton of time frame to work with to justify it. Both trilogies that came before took place over the course of years. Force Awakens and The Last Jedi are separated by hours, and The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker are separated by months. Rey was never given the time to develop, but needed to be powerful anyway. So they just pulled a Saitama, and without any of the fun, and made her powerful right away with no training, and it, oddly enough, was incredibly unsatisfying to all the fans. The premise I've been discussing would help a ton with this, without having to adjust the time frame. If Rey were the product of dark side force manipulation to create life, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch to include that she has this instinctive grasp, as I mentioned before, of even relatively difficult dark side techniques. It would then also follow that she would struggle with the more complicated light side techniques, like force healing, and would otherwise further vindicate Luke's apprehension about training her, because the dark side element would be really, really apparent in her. This would also assist in adding a bit more personal struggle to her story, which would help make her less of a cardboard cutout of a character who's just awesome at everything for no reason, and more of a character with real issues to work through. Instead, we got, who are Ray's parents? Well, at first, no idea. Hmm, what a mystery. And then, oh, they're nobodies. Oh, and then wait, she's actually Palpatine's freaking granddaughter, and nobody had a clue that he even had a kid, much less a grandkid. Okay. Also, she's all of the Jedi, and thanks to the fact that she's just awesome at everything, and the help of some ancient Jedi texts that even Luke never bothered to open, she had phenomenal force powers that we've never even seen before and which would have had massive implications for the rest of the series. Incidentally, while I've got you all here, I'd like to air one gripe about Force Awakens that I don't hear enough people talk about. Rey being proficient with a lightsaber. I know that early in the movie we get to see her kicking butt with a stick fighting, but a key element of stick fighting is that you can safely handle any part of it without hurting yourself. Another thing about martial arts in general is that in order to get good at them, you need to be able to move and act without taking the time to deliberately think about every motion and everything because things are happening fast, and hesitation equals injury or death. This means that Rey's fighting style would end in one of two ways with her switching to a lightsaber. Either she'd be overly careful and deliberate in her motions for fear of cutting or burning herself, and rightly so, and thus be super slow, and no match for Kylo, or she'd try to fight as she always had, like with a stick, and be super quick, but also just dismember herself while trying to handle the blade, because with a stick you can just spin it around and grab any end and slide along, whatever you want to do. You do that with a lightsaber and you just cut your hands off. But no, she has to be awesome at everything, so she was able to not only survive, but also get a small victory over Kylo Ren, who was a good enough fighter that he could take on half a dozen masters of martial combat, the Knights of Ren, and win without taking a scratch. Oh, but he was moderately injured at the time, so anything goes. Yeah, I'd buy that rationale if it weren't for the fact that blaster and lightsaber hits have been nerfed until they're basically just kind of inconvenient by Disney, and Kylo was clearly capable of functioning more or less normally despite his injury. All right, complaining over. That's all I've got for today. Let me know in the comments what you think of this concept, and if there's any other relatively simple fixes that wouldn't require completely rewriting the entire trilogy, but would have helped fix things. And until next time, live long and prosper, and may the Force be with you.